save 10% with my code BOBBY10. Just kidding guys, today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Dr. Shabir Ali and his video, Allah is One. 30 Reasons to be a Muslim. Ramadan 2023 series. I personally can give you countless reasons why it is a good idea to become a Muslim. However, I'm very curious to find out what the 30 concise reasons of Dr. Shabir Ali are. With no further ado, let's have a look. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum uh, peace be with you and the mercy and blessings of Allah and Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Very Ramadan excited Mubarak. to be here in the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless all of you people around you. Uh, bless all of your loved ones this Ramadan and forever. I'm your brother in faith, uh, Shabir Ali. And uh, today we want to start uh, our series uh, of dealing with 30 reasons for being Muslim. And, uh, you know, the old story, um, mom says to child, uh, do this. And the child says, why? And the mom says, because we are Muslim. And then the child says, but mommy, why do, I, why do we have to be Muslim? So... Here are 30 reasons, uh, starting today with the first one. Obviously, I cannot relate because I haven't been born into a Muslim family. Quite the opposite. I actually reverted three weeks ago. Nevertheless, it is still, of course, very interesting for me to hear what the reasoning is coming from a born Muslim. And I personally do believe that it translates for us reverts as well. First reason is that our belief in, in one God uh, is uh, not only assuring to us uh, and uh, it becomes clear for us in our worship so we're not confused between gods but it also puts us in harmony with other people who uh, are maybe worshiping God in a different way but our belief that there is only one God uh, means that we are open to thinking that other people are worshiping the same one God but maybe in a different way even if they call him by different names and uh, thirdly uh, we have uh, the sense that all things are created by the same one God that we worship and therefore we have respect for all things as uh, creatures of God. So he starts with the most powerful argument right away, the worship of one God. Obviously, this is the strongest point of Islam, the strict monotheism. It is this strict monotheism that clears up any doubt whatsoever. It is logical. If we go into even Sinai's contingency argument, it is just logical then to come to the conclusion that there is a first cause for everything. And this first cause 
can only be one. You cannot have multiple causes to begin something. If you have one God as the beginning, this rational, this logical. However, if you have three gods, for example, then the question is, who created those three gods? Because they are already in a state of separation. But if we're talking about one God, the almighty, the inseparable, the perfect unity, then you have a reasonable cause for existence. But moreover, he said something very important there in the end as well, that we're all worshiping the same one God, even though we're using different names. And I would agree here, of course, because in the discussion with my family members, what is not truly understood by them is that Allah is God, is the God of everything, the God of the universe, the God of the Christians, the God of the Jews. There is only one God. Therefore, if you become a Muslim, no, you're not worshipping another god, you're worshipping the god. Let me step back a bit then from this conclusion and look at the general picture and see where the problem lies. Problem uh, comes about when people try to think about who exactly might be uh, the creator of the universe. Uh, in the, in one sense uh, is that uh, the entire universe uh, is all one uh, thing like it's all uh, some people describe it uh, almost like an ocean uh, in which uh, we are just simply like droplets uh, and so everything is a unified whole but what if that ocean itself uh, has a creation a creator what if there is there a creator of the universe creator of the cosmos and we we believe yes but then if there is a creator the question arises uh, uh, how many creators are there like is there one or many and uh, exactly. the Muslim belief is that there is only one creator. Uh, but where do we get this belief from? Uh, where does that, uh, where is that belief stated in our Islamic sources? Well, we we'll say in the Quran and in the Hadith. First, in the Quran, it is very clear that there is only one God. The Muslim declaration of faith, which says, uh, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but God, is mentioned throughout the Quran. And we find this uh, statement, you know, dozens of times. We also find it sometimes uh, in uh, other um, in, in addition to the dozens of times in those uh, specific words, uh, we find uh, also that uh, there is a declaration and a variety of uh, wordings which mean the same thing. For example, what do you think of the second chapter of the Quran, the 255th uh, verse, that many Muslims have memorized uh, since they were children? Uh, the verse that is referred to as Ayatul Kursi, uh, which reads uh, at the beginning, uh, Allahu la ilaha illa hu. Uh, Allah, there is no God but He. So it's the same words of the Kalima, uh, but uh, in a slightly uh, reversed uh, order, uh, meaning exactly the same thing. There is no God but God. And there is also a short surah of the Quran that uh, ch Muslim children uh, have uh, memorized. The Shahada is so powerful because it is a negative statement. It's a negation. Think about it. It doesn't say there is only one God. Period. It says there is no God but God. By that, you're discarding actively everything around you and everything that you can imagine, everything that you can think of is discarded right away. There is no God but God. Like this, you're setting up the framework. You're destroying every other conceptualization, everything else that you could think of and add to it, such as the Trinity, for example. It is impossible because it says there is no God but God. If it would only say there is one God, then you can, of course, go further down the line and say, yes, sure, there is one God, but this one God is actually three persons, etc., etc., you name it. So this is a fail-safe mechanism, ultimately, when it says there is no God but God. Uh, that is the 112th chapter known as Surah Al-Ikhlas, and uh, it reads, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ أَلَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوَانْ أَحَدْ uh, Say, he is Allah, one. Uh, Allah, the eternal, he begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like unto him. So, uh, we see that this is a clear declaration of monotheism. There is only one God, yes. and uh, this is the eternal God. He doesn't have any children. He himself is not a child of someone else. Which, yet again, of course, resonated so deeply with me personally. When I opened up the Quran back in the day, I wanted to debunk it. I wanted to find the devil within the Quran. However, when you read such statements, man, you have to be so ignorant, such an idiot, to be totally honest, to then still say, this is the devil's book. Clearly, it's 
is the Book of Monotheism. It brings back your attention onto one God alone. Yeah, there is That's none it. like unto God. There's none comparable. There's no, there's no co-equal exactly. uh, along with God. Nothing. So this uh, belief then is very clearly entrenched in the Quran. Also, we find in Hadith many references to the belief in, in the oneness of God to the extent that there are Hadiths which promise uh, that if a person says that there is no God but God and one sincerely believes that, then that person will be in paradise uh, forever. We, we all pray that God is going to welcome us into paradise, especially as we're here in the month of Ramadan. And uh, we're coming from a Christian family. Of course, I can only hope that this is true, that the realization of monotheism is enough. Trying our best to serve God and please him, especially during this sacred month. So back to our topic here. Uh, we find that the hadith is uh, emphasizing belief in one God. A hadith even promises that if anyone believes that there is only one God and believes in, the, let's say, Jesus, on whom be peace, as the messenger of God, then that person will also enter paradise. So that is a good news for our Jewish and uh, Christian friends, that if one believes in Moses, but believes also in Jewish. God, who is the one <laughs> God that sent Moses, believes in Jesus, but also believes in the one God that sent Jesus into the world, then uh, one will be in paradise uh, forever. So this uh, then, in short, is a unifying belief. Uh, so what are the benefits? Um, one is that it gives Muslims a clear sense of whom they are worshipping. There's no confusion among the many gods. It's not like we have to please one god today and one god tomorrow, or maybe all of the gods all at once. And uh, then it becomes rather confusing. Absolutely, man. This is the clarity of mind that you get once you submit yourself to God. And actually, even during me reading the Quran, pondering the Quran, not even having reverted yet during that time, I already got so much clarity in my mind because I finally could let go of that confusing trinity. It was really daunting. It was so confusing and so outrageous, something that I could not believe. It was something that I had to force upon myself, make myself believe. Okay, today I'm going to pray to Jesus. I'm doing the Jesus prayer. Tomorrow I'm doing the Father's prayer. But how about the Holy Spirit? Should I pray to the Holy Spirit today or to everybody at once? Who is it? Who comes first? The Quran clearly tells you it is only one God. Yet again, our belief in, it's in very simple. Uh, the fact that there is only one God uh, is a unifying belief uh, among human beings in that when we see that other people are referring to God in a different way or trying to worship God in a different way, we realize that they're still, despite their differences, worshiping the same God that we are worshiping. And finally, a third benefit is that uh, we recognize that everything are creatures of the same one God that we worship. And so we can of have course. respect for all of the creatures of God. We can have respect for all people of all stripes, all colors, knowing that all of these people are uh, worshipers of the same one God and they are creatures of the same one God that uh, we worship. And so uh, we find that there are many good benefits in believing that there is only one God. So in sum, uh, is the Muslim belief uh, in the oneness of God uh, a, um, a reason for being a Muslim? You bet. Uh, so that's our first reason. And join me tomorrow again for another reason for being Muslim. I Peace be with you and the mercy today. and blessings of Allah. Hmm. Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak. All right, guys, and this is it, man. I announced this as the 30 reasons to be a Muslim, but apparently it is a series and we got only one reason. Nevertheless, it was the strongest reason. Of course, Allah is one. God is one. I agreed with most points made here by Dr. Shabir Ali. However, that we all worship the same God directly, I cannot fully agree with. So if we're talking about the so-called Abrahamic faiths, yes, I could agree that we're talking about the same one God. God. However, the conceptualization of that God is, of course, very, very different. And therefore, it might be that certain groups actually do not pray to the same God. Because if we talk about the Christians and they believe that Jesus is God and they're praying directly towards Jesus, 
then I cannot say that we are praying to the same God. Of course not, because they are praying to the creation and not to the creator. Or if we're talking about Buddhism, they don't even believe in one God. I will, however, agree that we, of course, are all creatures of God and Allah guides who he wills. Therefore, it is not for us to judge them. They have their path and ultimately we can only hope that they will be guided. However, I personally do believe that it has to be clarified, of course, that there are certain belief systems that do not go hand in hand with the worship of one God. And you can, of course, make an argument for this if you look into the Arabic Peninsula where Islam stemmed from. What was Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, faced with? He was faced with the pagans and they were attacking him. And he was, of course, demolishing their belief system. Yes, it was not a tolerant act of, hey, let's all just believe whatever we want to believe. Of course not. He said clearly there is no God but God. Worship him alone. So this is, of course, already a discriminatory statement, if you will, and rightfully so. It is good because he discarded the pagan beliefs of the Arabic Peninsula. And the same applies, of course, for the Christian conquistadors that went over to South America, for example. So therefore, yet again, to boil it down, no, we're not all worshiping the same God directly. Indirectly, yes, of course, because there is only one God. So no matter what you think you are doing, you cannot worship anything else but God, because he is the only God there is. But in practice, of course, there are differences, and we cannot say that we are worshiping all the same one God. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel by Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.